Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius and welcome back to the fish room. So today I want to give you guys a closer look at my DIY sump system. I get quite a few questions about this system. It's definitely not your typical sump. I'm using my sump to filter the water inside of my 880 gallon aquarium along with the water in my 350 gallon aquarium. All together with these two aquariums plus the water in the tank, we have about 1300 gallons flowing 24 seven. So this sump definitely has a high job, is very demanding and yet to get the jobs done and I'd say it's pretty successful. So today I want to give you guys a look at how my sump actually works. We're going to follow the flow of water and see all the different steps the water has to go through before it enters the aquarium again. And I want to give you guys the pros and cons of this type of filter. Now before I get into that, I do want to remind you guys the purpose of a filter on our aquariums. I believe that a filter has three main functions, one of which is to clarify the water. We have media inside of our filters that catches debris and particles in the water, giving us a clearer picture when we look into our aquariums. The second purpose of a filter is to circulate the water to allow proper oxygen exchange to give a nice turnover in the water. And thirdly, is to expose our water to beneficial bacteria housed in our filters. And I believe that my filter is doing a great job at all three of these. Hey everyone, so I want to give you guys a good idea of how my sump actually works. And I figured that the best way to do that is to give you guys just a nice display and have a little bit of a drawing going on. Not the most vivid picture, but you guys should get an idea. So this is pretty much my sump setup. I'm using two 55 gallon drums. It's all DIY and I'll just show you guys the flow of water. And I think that this is the best way to understand how my sump works. So from the left side we have water coming in. This is water coming in from my 350 gallon aquarium along with my 880 gallon aquarium the water comes in and it comes into these totes inside this first tote it is filled with filter floss which I believe is the number one ingredient for crystal clear water after that it goes into the second tote and I have sponges and metallomat and this is good for just catching larger debris these two totes I clean about maybe once a month um, but that is the only part of the filter that actually gets clean. The rest of it, I just leave it be. After that, the water goes down into the third chamber, which has sponge filters. I don't clean these at all, and this is good to have. These are regular sponge filters. I believe it's good to have them in here because if I have to start up a new tank, I have a bunch of sponge filters already full of beneficial bacteria. After that, it goes to the bottom of this tote, and it comes into this bottom chamber, which is full of lava rock. And you know lava rock is good for beneficial bacteria so it stays in there the lava rock is never touched never cleaned because obviously i want to preserve my um beneficial bacteria the water then flows up on the sides and it comes up and out of this first chamber into the second chamber now i have this right here and this is just an emergency if for some reason this right here gets clogged this area this first pipe gets clogged this is just my backup and the water will flow up and come out but I've been running this for about two years and I've never had an issue with my first valve being clogged so normally the water comes through here comes in to the second chamber this is full of all beneficial bacteria so I have bio cubes bio rocks and things like that full and it comes in here I have my pump in here my pump sucks up the water and shoots it back into my aquariums I also have some plants in here um, a bunch of wandering Jew which you'll see in the video just helping also to absorb some of the nutrients that are in the water and then it shoots back into my aquariums now obviously I work with multiple aquariums so I would have um, two connections this one right here being for my 350 this is terrible now I'm getting pretty sloppy but just so you get an idea so they both come in and then they go back out into two aquariums. And obviously I'm working in the corner so I have turns and everything like that. But this is just an idea of how my sump works. And I believe it's um, pretty simple. It worked for me. It works with the area that I have. And it's pretty effective. My water is crystal clear. My environment is overall healthy. And um, my fish are thriving. So I believe that that diagram I just showed you guys is the clearest way to understand what happens in my sump. But I want to go ahead again and give you guys a look at the flow of the water, this time looking directly at the sump. So we have water being drained from my 880 and my 350 at the same time via overflow. 
the water is overflow from these tanks. They go down pipes and end up in my first chamber. Now inside this right drum we have a three level tote tower and the water from my 880 and my 350 they meet up on top and together they both go into the first drawer. Inside the first drawer we have filter floss and this is perfect for just purifying your water. This stuff is so fine it catches all the fine particles. I'm not going to open up these drawers because if I do it's going to release all the dirt and uh, debris that was collected and it's going to dirty the water and ruin the video. So you're just going to have to trust me that these are actually in these components. After that, the water goes down into the next chamber, which has more mechanical filtration, sponges, pads, metallomat, more materials that are great for polishing the water. After that, it is released into the third chamber, which has sponge filters. And as I told you guys, I never go into that third chamber. Those sponge filters are in there, and they're just backup filtration for new aquariums or aquariums that need more beneficial bacteria. So I never touch those, but it is full of sponge filters. After that, the water drains out the bottom of this tote tower and it goes into a level of lava rocks. Now in my diagram it looked like I had a lot of lava rocks but actually there's only about three inches of lava rock on the bottom of this right drum which is still pretty good. I believe it was like 25 to 30 pounds worth of lava rock and that stuff is great because it collects a lot of beneficial bacteria. So the water flows through that and then it rises up and it overflows into my second drum. Now as you saw in the diagram I do have the second overflow and this is just in case of an emergency if my first hole or my first drainage is clogged. But as I told you guys, I have never had that issue. But that is a backup up there. So the water flows over into my next drum and it goes directly through PVC and is shot towards the bottom. All over the second drum I have biological filtration. So I have ceramic O-rings. I have these cubes, cubes, blocks, I don't know what you'll call them. Um, all this stuff is just meant for beneficial bacteria. I just looked online, looked for some of the best products for housing beneficial bacteria, and whatever I saw was great. I have it down at the bottom of this second chamber. So this second drum is mainly with beneficial bacteria. And then I have my pump, pumping water back into my two aquariums, split off, one going to the left, obviously going over to my 350, one going to the right, going to my 880, and you can see the flow rate, a decent flow rate. So I believe it checks off the three most important functions of a filter, as I mentioned, water clarity. As you can see, my water is pretty pristine. Um, water circulation, I have a decent amount of circulation. You can see I have a nice flow in my aquariums because of my sump. And thirdly, beneficial bacteria. I have a ton of beneficial bacteria in my sump. So I believe this pretty much gets the job done as a filter. Now the drum to the left does look a little bit weird. We have a light on it and I'm using the light to grow plants. I'm growing Wandering Jew which is growing nicely. You know plants are very beneficial to our aquariums. They help remove nitrates produced by fish and just create a more healthier ecosystem. Um, and then I have a t-shirt wrapped around the drum simply because the light is so bright. It kind of takes attention from my main aquariums. So I just put the t-shirt to shade it a little bit and to make it a little bit less noticeable. Okay everyone, to finalize the video, I just want to go over a few pros and cons with my sump system. So to start off, one of my first pros is that it is highly customizable. You can pretty much do whatever you want with your sump. When it comes to media, you can choose any type of media that you wish. You can see with my sump, I'm using these blocks. You can never use these inside of canister filters. You, you will have a hard time using these inside of hang on the back filters. But in your sump, you can use just about anything that you want. You can use as much as you want. If I wanted to, I could fill my sump with lava rock and that's it. The choice is mine. So when it comes to sumps, it's very customizable. You can customize your flow rates and everything and it's really in your hand. You have so much power with your sump. So it's definitely one of the most customizable filters you can have on an aquarium. The second thing that I like about my sump is that the water has to go through so many different chambers. The water goes on such an adventure it's just highly oxygenated. It's kind of like a man-made river. It has to go up and down and all these tosses and turns and you can see the water bubbling and no doubt my aquariums are highly oxygenated because the water is really turned over so often. Another thing that I like about my sump is just it's pretty convenient. When you look at my basement, I have monster aquariums and a not so monstrous basement. My basement is not that big and yet I like these big aquariums. So I'm kind of tight on space. However, this sump is pretty convenient. It fits into this little corner. It covers about maybe five by two feet of space, which isn't too bad. 
and um, yeah, pretty convenient for me. One final pro of my sump system is that it allows you to be a little bit more creative when it comes to the overall life in your ecosystem. Like in my sump, I've added plants. I know for certain people, you just can't keep plants in your aquarium, whether it's because you have fish that eat them or you just have fish that like to destroy them. So if you have a sump, you're able to have plants in your sump and you can still get the advantage of plants in your overall aquarium. You can also add things like copepods or snails. I've added both to my sump. These things help by breaking down foods that get into your sump and they can also benefit your aquarium by reproducing, going into your tank and being a snack for your fish. So little things like this just make the overall aquarium experience a lot more entertaining. Um, just nice to see these little creatures pop up in your aquarium and just a nice benefit of a sump. Now I want to talk to you guys about some of the cons of my sump system. And the first con is that there are no instructions. There is no handbook. And there are very few videos, if any, showing you guys how to actually build a sump like this. Most of your sumps are aquariums that allow the water to flow horizontally up and down different chambers. There's a lot of videos showing you how to do it and it's pretty simple controlling the flow of water when you're going horizontally. In my type of sump, we're working with water going up and down and there are very few videos showing you how to actually make a sump like this. So you're on your own, it's trial and error. For me, it took me one year to actually get crystal clear water. For my first year, my water was murky, and that's because my water just wasn't going through my media. With my current setup, it's pretty effective, so maybe you could use this as a blueprint. But for me as a beginner, it was just very hard because I had no experience. So that's one of the cons with this type of sump or with any irregular sumps. You're on your own, it's gonna take some creativity. And with me personally, sometimes that can be a struggle bringing out that creativity with something like this. Another con about my sump system is that it does have the potential to flood. Now, I've never flooded my sump while I was running, or even if the power turned off, I've never had my sump flood because of that. However, sometimes during maintenance, when I'm doing water changes, I flooded my sump. Honestly, this is because of my negligence. With my other aquariums that don't have a sump, when I drain the water, I refill the aquarium up to the brim. You cannot do this with a tank that is connected to a sump. You have to refill the tank up to the overflow level. But with me, sometimes I get distracted. I'm, when I do water changes, I do like 10 things at the same time. And I forget, and I fill up my sump aquariums all the way up to the brim, and all that water has to go through the overflow, and it ends up on my floor. This is something that's just because I'm not watchful and I'm distracted, but I'll count this as a con because during water changes, I know we like to preoccupy ourselves, so that can be a little bit dangerous. Okay, everyone, my last and final con about my sump system is that it is extremely loud and annoying. And the crazy thing is that there are several different annoying sounds at the same time. So we have the sound of water running. We have the sound of water falling. We have the sound of water bubbling. And then we have this random growling sound. And this goes on 24 seven and it's just extremely annoying. I come down sometimes and I just wanna relax. And the only way to do that is to put earbuds in and to listen to music because otherwise the sound of my sump is terrible. Like I said, I've had my sump for over two years and I've tried many different things to silence it. But that right there is the one down, the biggest downside of my sump. It is the loudest filtration system ever. So yeah, everyone, that is a look at my sump system. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. For those of you who had questions, hopefully I answer all your questions. If you still have more questions, just let me know and I'll get back to you in the comment section below. If you have any recommendations for videos, let me know in the comment section below and I'll get to them. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it all together. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I definitely appreciate the support and I'll catch you guys on the next one.